Hey everyone, and welcome back to my channel. Mangotology. So today I have a very special guest on my channel, Miss Karen Presley, and she is the author of a new upcoming book. Karen's book is entitled Escaping Scientology, an insider's true story. My journey with the cult of celebrity, spirituality, greed, and power, with Fords by Mike Rinder and Steve Hassan. The link to purchase Karen's book is down in the description box of this video. Today's video is brought to you by SuppressiveMerchandise.com. Suppressive Merchandise is my brand new online merchandise store for men, women, and children, featuring anti-Scientology slogans and pop culture items. Some of the t-shirt slogans include, Do I look brainwashed to you? Suppressive person? Squirrel Busters? All Hail Lord Xenu? And Mangotology. I spent many weeks working on making these items and creating a really great line of anti-Scientology wear. To see more, go to SuppressiveMerchandise.com to browse my shop and to get more information. We're going to be having a chat about the Celebrity Center today and Scientology. And if you didn't already know, Karen is the former commanding officer of Celebrity Center. And I obviously was a parishioner of the Scientology Celebrity Center, so I've been really excited to have a chat with you today. And I'm really happy that you decided to come on my channel because I think that we have a lot of interesting stories to share about Scientology, but specifically the Celebrity Center. So I think we really do too. I really look forward to this conversation. Hey, awesome. Yeah. So I'm sure others are wondering specifically what is a commanding officer because you were in charge of basically the whole Celebrity Center network, right? True. The way Celebrity Center works is there's a president that takes care of the actual like local celebrities. Right. And then there's an executive director that handles like the business aspect of it. Mm -hmm. And this is of each Celebrity Center, but the commanding officer was over both the president and the executive director of all the Celebrity Centers in the world. And at the mm -hmm. time that I was the commanding officer of the network, there were 13 Celebrity Centers. Wow. So we had London, Paris, Dusseldorf, Hamburg, in the EU, and then mm -hmm. in uh, the U.S. we had, you know, all the big cities, New York, Chicago, Dallas, Hollywood, Nashville, Las Vegas. Wow. So, so you had a very big position, obviously, within the Church of Scientology, and you also eventually were working underneath David Miscavige in terms of, like you were telling me kind of before we started chatting on camera, we were talking a bit about your fashion and your creative artistic background. So kind of fill us in a little bit about what initially drew you to Scientology and specifically kind of about your background like in the arts. Well, we got into Scientology actually through the music business. I was married to Peter Schles. And he was a um, really successful musician, but we actually first heard about Scientology, or he did, through Chick Corea, mm -hmm. a great jazz musician. Then Peter was working on the soundtrack of the movie Urban Cowboy, and John Travolta was a Scientologist. Then uh, Peter got an invitation for us to move out to LA by a musician named Les Duda. He used to play with Boss Gags and the Allman Brothers. Yeah. And at the time, Les Dudek was a guitar player for Cher's new band. So Peter accepted this gig to play for Cher in her Black Rose group. So we came out to LA, and when we got there, Peter had a roadie who moved his equipment from gig mm -hmm. to gig, and the roadie was a Scientologist. So everywhere we went, we just kept running into people who were in Scientology. And Great. we weren't looking for a religion. We were just interested in what Scientology had to offer to help artists become better communicators right. uh, to achieve success through the arts. That's what we were interested in. And I feel like Scientology, specifically with Celebrity Center, they're creating an image that they have a lot of big celebrities, that they're prominent in arts and business and all of these different dynamics. So I think specifically for someone like myself, when I was also in the same way kind of attracted to Scientology, like what is it, like what do these people find so fascinating? Like the John Travolta's or the Kirstie Alley's, these people like myself as a young actor at the time, I really looked up to these big Hollywood movie stars and was wondering like, well, if they were involved in Scientology, then there must be something that is, you know, drawing to them, to this yeah. faith, you know what I mean? Like I what? mean, yeah, what you're saying right there, you could call that kind of the success equation. Like uh, a young artist like you that had desired to develop your acting skills, you were looking at successful actors, right? Who, yeah. if Scientology helped them to become successful, then maybe it could work for me. And I think that that 
sort of thought process was common for a lot of people. And Celebrity Center's job is to actually uh, recruit new people in for that exact purpose, to nurture them through their career, to counsel them, to keep them under their wing while you're developing your artistic ability. But do you agree with me that in the process of finding out about Scientology, you got more focused on becoming a better Scientologist. Right, exactly. And did getting focused on becoming a better Scientologist, did that really help you to become a better actor? No, not at all. And the thing is, is that I was going in thinking I was doing this how to break into the entertainment industry seminar for $50 coming in. I didn't necessarily know when I first went to Celebrity Center that I was going to be roped into or pitched taking a Scientology course. Right. So that's what kind of basically happened to me. And I'm sure that you're very familiar with how those seminars sort of work in terms of recruiting in the young actors. They advertise in backstage newspaper. They advertise um, online on different acting sites. So I used to organize people, the seminars. <laughs> right. And we have a lot of talk about what those seminars and how they work because a lot of people always ask me about if I go to the seminar, am I going to get roped into Scientology? So for me, I went in thinking, oh, I'm going to get a little bit of help with my acting career. Right. And then slowly, all of a sudden, now I'm focused on, oh, I'm going to become an auditor and go up the bridge. And now I'm at CC from sun up to sundown. And my whole entire life is being on the course. And obviously, I had a very short staff stint for one day, but you know, I was always in recruitment sessions trying to get me into the Sea Org, and eventually I was about to leave to join the Sea Org, and I met my husband, again, a little bit later on into the story, but um, all the time in between that, from my very first seminar to having to leave, it wasn't supposed to be something that was supposed to overtake my life. I thought I'd get a little bit of self-help, whatever, but I didn't think it was going to be a full-time gig where all of a sudden now I'm thinking about devoting my life to this group. Yeah. It's interesting how it kind of sucks you in. Yeah, yeah, well, so you, you know, you came in wanting to develop your artistry as an actor to the point of, like, what John Travolta reached or what other people reached that you admired, and instead of focusing on that, you were, like I said, becoming a better Scientologist. And were you aware of the fact, as a new artist, Scientologist, were you aware of the fact that there was an intentional strategy to use these self-help courses, which I call the Scientology appetizers? Right. You know, the little $50 courses and the little introductory Dianetic sessions. Were you aware of the fact that <clears throat> we would feed you these appetizers uh, with the goal of getting you to the main buffet and, you know, getting into all the bigger, the meat of Scientology? the big auditing, the, right. the in-depth training, were you aware of that? Not in the very beginning. I knew that at first, like when I went in and what I kind of discovered later was that they do, they kind of give you a little bit of information and a little bit more before they let you have the whole entire stake, so to speak. Right. So for me, I only thought that I, my very first course was self-analysis. This was before they kind of re-released their life improvement courses, and now they're really focusing on pitching those life improvement courses. But I just started basically on the basic book and lecture courses, and that was one of my first courses I was on. But I didn't know that there was this whole entire world, this bridge to total freedom. I didn't know that there was all that encompassed in what I was doing. So they kind of slowly start getting you in, like, okay, here's this course, what did you think? Oh, we have a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, and then all of a sudden you're talking in the language, yeah. all your friends are Scientologists, I work for Scientologists, I had a business that was, all my clients were Scientologists, so eventually I got to this place where my whole entire life was surrounded by Scientology, Scientology thinks, Scientology speak, and I basically started losing myself, and what I initially came out to LA to do was to perform and be an actor. I was more concerned with getting money to go on course, or for auditing or for any sort of thing wow. versus like let me try to put that into acting headshots right. or doing things that doing would actually... Doing marketing for yourself and right, that would additional acting it. training. Right. Yeah. Now as someone who was in charge of recruiting celebrities and being on top of that sort of game, what was the strategy with celebrities but also in terms of like new up-and-coming actors? Were people like me as a new actor someone that was 
that you were trying to groom to be a product of Scientology, or what was kind of like that whole sort of thing, if that makes any sense? It absolutely makes sense, because that you've just kind of covered the gamut of, of the kind of people that Celebrity Center would look for. Truth be told, Celebrity Center really wanted the A-listers, because the A-listers are the opinion leaders, and they can turn around and talk about Scientology like Nike hires Tiger Woods to endorse their golf balls. Nike right. has the best golf balls. Scientology does this intentionally, tries to get artists and celebrities winning with Scientology, like liking the auditing and liking the training, to where they will say, you know, the auditing and training has helped me to be more successful. And to turn around and, and to say that as a mouthpiece. So right. Scientology wanted to make mouthpieces so that they would turn around and bring in their celebrity friends and their people opinion like me leaders. who are yeah. just the wannabe up actors. Up, up and coming, coming. And we all know and that those registrars and other people involved in Scientology are always pointing out the very successful Scientologists in order to get you in a little bit deeper. Like for me, they exactly. told me in order to join the C organization it would benefit my acting career and that's how I would become a bigger star because they mentioned, they said, Leah Remini did a sitcom because I said I want to be a sitcom star. They said, well, Leah Remini was in the Sea Org and she served her time in the Sea Org and then later on she became this big international star and she started on King of Queens and all these other major shows. They actually told you that that could be a path for you? Yes. They actually told you, you could actually be in the Sea Org and then go off to be an actor. Right, and they I'm thinking, use that to billionaire contract. Wow. And they would use that. That is in order. so deceitful. Yeah, and they said that that's how you're going to be able to gain the competence, the leadership, the, the ability to basically make a postulate and make it happen, right. and all this sort of stuff. And you're going to be able to be in training when you're in the Sea Org and do specific Sea Org courses, just in addition to regular wow. basic book and lectures and receiving other auditing to really prepare you so then you can become a bigger star. Wow. But also, when that didn't really work on me, I'm like, okay, I know that if I'm in the Sea Org, I'm committing my life to this. I don't know how I'm gonna then be able to go off to an acting audition, I knew that. But then they said, well, you need to be able to go off and be able to use your acting skills to better Scientology and to bring more people in by disseminating Scientology through your acting, whether that's appearing wow. in a Dianetics film, whether it's appearing on stage in an international event, you know how to play, you know, the flute, like whatever, like they always saying, like, well, you're gonna be able to use that skill and be able to perform in Scientology. And you're gonna be the star of the Dianetics film. Think about that. Wow. Think about the power that you have and think about knowing that you are now helping other people learn about Dianetics. Now, do you wanna do that as an actor or do you wanna play some drug addled, person, a psychiatrist, or play someone very low tone, because they told me I was not able to play or perform in roles that would take on the beingness of those type of characters, whether it's, like I said, the drug addicts are very low tone beings or being gay, any of that. But then you think about it, and there's other celebrities, not naming any names, because we couldn't name names, but there are other celebrities who do play, play gay and lesbian like characters, Absolutely. but since they're A-list, it seems like they get the, they get the free freedom to do that. What about Elizabeth Moss, the role that she's playing in The Handmaid's Tale? Playing a woman who is basically held, held captive in a culture, right. <laughs> which is exactly portraying what Scientology does to people. Exactly, and it's just like, how does this happen? Yeah. It just, it doesn't make any sense to me that some of them have like a free pass, where other people, which is the majority of Scientologists, and especially people who belong to Celebrity Center, are not treated anywhere near what these celebrities are treated, because I'm sure with the president's office and things, I've heard they have a buffet for them in the president's office, they have special auditors that can send them to your home, all this sort of thing, while people like me are then made to donate tens of thousands of dollars because right. you need to be like one of those right. big stars to get the roles and you need to outflow 10,000 and get $10,000 and book a big commercial. So there's all these different tricks I feel like they play Absolutely. to manipulate people in. At least for me, that's my job, is to try to stop other people who are like myself thinking, oh, I can go in for a $50 workshop or a course. People ask me all the time, can I just go in and just do a life improvement course and then go, or to go to benefit my acting career? What product have they turned out in terms of a major celebrity besides John Travolta, Tom Cruise, Kirstie Alley, and some people from, they were in, long time, 70s maybe, right. 80s, they were in from a different generation of Scientology, and some of them had success beforehand, 
a lot of them don't really have a lot of success now. But no, that's you don't a see great a lot point. Of what are the products? What are Scientology's products in terms of making big celebrities from people who were up and comings, uh, who had a talent, but needed assistance and training and stuff? What are the products? How many are there? How many people? have come up the lines and actually right. gone from an up and coming to an A-list celebrity. We might be able to name them on one hand, maybe two. There's this whole celebrity center network that's supposed to be helping groom people to be able to be right. these big stars and they're promising people. And a lot of the times, like I remember a story at Celebrity Center, there was some girl and she was homeless and she gave money instead of being able to pay for an apartment or anything in order to get towards one of the ACCs because mm. those were supposed to help her. Because she can listen to it in her car, that's what they said. You're homeless, you can listen to ACCs in your car and then you're gonna be able to get to where you want to be with your acting career, her music career. I don't remember specifically what she, her artistic thing was, yeah. but they were saying, you might as well give your money. And they were laughing about it later on because they knew that they got her and tricked her to get those lectures. So there's wow. so much of deceit. deceit. Manipulation. And manipulation. And a bigger term is coercion. Um, you know, the, the, the point of coercion and undue influence. I think that any artist who is considering doing anything at Celebrity Center needs to first find out, first do your research, look at both sides, but find out how Celebrity Center uses certain tactics to get the result that they want versus the result that you want. And the, exactly. result, the result that they want is they want to hook you uh, like they were doing, telling you you could actually join the Sea Org to become an actor. Um, that would never Don't happen. Don't do that people out there who are watching. <laughs> that, that would never happen, first of all, that violates what L. Ron Hubbard says about being in the Sea Org. You're supposed to do any job assigned and support command intentions. So right. if you came in the Sea Org as a dentist, a trained dentist, that doesn't mean you're going to be a dentist in a Sea Org job. Just like right. if you come in as an actor or a dancer, you are certainly not going to have a dancing role. Right, they're um, going to say, how much training have you received? What are you able to produce? They want to know, obviously, if you're a trained auditor, maybe they're going to post you some you know, somewhere that you can um, utilize. So task, yeah. yeah, exactly. So you're not necessarily going to be able to, it's a lot of bait and switch, whether it's the acting seminars, Absolutely. whether it's trying to get someone in Scientology. The basic point is that there's a lot of bait and switch that happens. But when you look, why do they have to bait and switch? It's because there's not, you're not able to obtain what they say that you're able to get out of it. You're not able to have OT powers. You're not able to do a lot of the stuff that they promise. They're mm -hmm. not able to get you what they're selling. But the system is set it. up to convince you that you will get that. They, if they didn't have that sort of a game, there would be nothing going on. You know, there would be no challenge, there would be no objective. So those are the promises that are made. And it's all about, you know, it's about the use of coercion. It's, it's dangling a carrot and getting you to believe that you could achieve a particular superpower or, or a specific ability and then not delivering it. Right. And then when you go to talk to them about, hey, I thought that by now I should be able to have this ability, they would blame it on you. You know, that something was wrong with you, that you had an ethics right. issue. You point the finger to yourself you instead of pointing finger. it at them and say, hey, right. maybe it's the tech not working, right. maybe it's the whole entire system and what's actually going on inside Scientology. Yeah, but, uh, and to that, yeah. that brings to mind, you just reminded me of something that I wanted to contribute on that topic. Yeah. The individual Scientologist is always told that they have to be responsible for whatever they create or whatever they pull in, right. right? Like whatever happens to you. But what about, let's take a car manufacturer. Mm -hmm. Let's say that Ford builds a new Escape and there are flaws in that model. Well, the right thing to do for Ford is to do a recall. Pull the vehicles off the road, fix it, give it back to the consumer and make sure they're happy. <laughs> Not in Scientology okay? when they re-release. Not in Scientology. <laughs> and the, the story that I wanted to te share with you is that one of the things that, you know, once I was in, in, in the Sea Org for years and I was working at the in base, one of the things that broke me, believing that Scientology was a fraud, was I was at, at an in base briefing and mm -hmm. David Miscavige, the head of the Church of Scientology, was talking to all of us, 800 in-base staff, yeah. about a condition of a flag at, at the flag land base. Supposedly, 
the technical mecca of Scientology. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Miscavige announced that the director of processing, whose name was Jan, I won't say her first name, had allowed over 750 advanced Scientologists to attest to OT7 who didn't make it. They were told that they had achieved the level, but they didn't make it. Just for their stats, right? Is it, was it more of a stat push at that time just to get people through OT7? Because they were stuck, a lot of people on OT7 for 10 years, however long, you know, and they weren't it, finishing, then it yeah. got a flag for these six month checks and blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. So, continue, well, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, <laughs> no it, it's part of that. Maybe stats of the director of processing at that time. But what he pointed out, and this was what really broke me, he said that the problem is that no one knows how to audit. Mm. So if FLAG, the mecca of technical perfection, had been training all these people for all these years who had invested hundreds of mm. thousands of dollars in training and auditing, and then they finish OT7, and they're told they made it, but David Miscavige says they didn't make it. What happened? What happened? Well, first of all, it obviously negated everything that those people thought they had achieved. But he's also saying that no one knows how to audit. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if no one knows how to audit, let's compare that to the Ford Escape right. that's broken. What he should have done, if there was any integrity involved, is bring all those people back, put them through free training, right. tell them what was incorrect, or give them a refund if they weren't happy. But no, that's not what Scientology does. It's the person is responsible for the bad training. They should have known that it was not, yeah. they should have known that it Please. didn't bring them the result that, you know. And so everybody, so now we have the golden age of tech where everybody had to retrain at their own expense and repay for everything, which was an income strategy for the church that brought in, you know, probably millions of dollars over a period of time. But enough people saw through that lie and said, that's an, uh, the Church of Scientology is an overt product maker. And in Scientology right. terms, that means, okay, if you're charging people hundreds of thousands of dollars to learn how to audit and you didn't train them properly, you need to either give a refund or retrain them at, at the church's, church's expense. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because of what you said earlier about, um, you know, well, you said several things that reminded mm -hmm. me of that, but that's what I wanted to tie that to. That's the thing. The Church of Scientology should have some sort of moral, ethical sort of code that they follow, especially with their parishioners in terms of saying like, hey, they invested all this time, all this money. Right. We obviously are saying that we have the answers to spiritual freedom, to the problems of mankind, social ills, all these different things. If the tech was really able to produce what they said that they're able to produce, or if their goal is to clear the planet, why not, like you say, put everyone through the training for free? Why not do that if it's really going to make a difference to better our planet? If but that's what they really cared about, if that was their real motivation. If that was their motivation, right. versus when there's money, there's greed, income, income, yeah. income greed. primarily. Income, greed, Income yes. and greed is like the two things that come to mind. And yeah, that's just like um, going clear. Well, actually, it was the Time Magazine article the that Time came Magazine. out in 1991, mm -hmm. uh, which is partly the title of my book. I follow that title, um, My Journey with the Cult of Celebrity Spirituality, Greed and Power, that came out of the Time Magazine article because um, he totally covered it, pretty much what we're talking about right now. The article exposed these things about Scientology, but Scientology took it as a complete attack, as if it was unwarranted. So um, tying that back to what we were talking about regarding you as an artist, and me as a commanding officer of, Cele of Celebrity Center, you know, it was our job to find people like you and recruit you into Scientology um, for to do this exact thing, get you to train, get you to pay for auditing, get you to spend a lot of money at the Celebrity Center. And we had 13 Celebrity Centers to reach out to artists all mm -hmm. around the world. 
And then what ends up happening is they say, well, in my case, you run out of money or your acting career is not getting to where you want it to be. And they say, hey, you're ready to join the Sea Org. And they try to catch you at that point where you didn't have a good audition or something didn't really work out. Hey, come on, like it's not working out for you. Come on, we can give you a great career in the Sea Org. And really, it's just part of that level of deception. But there's something that I wanted to ask you just because I know we don't have a lot of time because Honestly, we can sit here and probably talk for hours about Celebrity Center, about a lot of things. And we'll probably do this again. And we'll probably think? do it again. Yeah. I'm going to come visit you yeah. in Florida, and we're going to make a whole video series we about should. Celebrity Center. We should. So come over and, we should. okay, we're going to plan yeah. that. Okay. But in terms of sexuality, because for me, and I'm sure just Celebrity Center and actors in LA in general, there is a big LGBT population. Mm -hmm. And obviously Scientology says a lot of questionable things about LGBT. Right. I wasn't out of the closet at the time because I was trying to maintain good graces with Scientology because I wanted to join the Sea Org possibly and become an auditor and receive processing again. My view for acting was here, but really in the back of my mind, but really I have this whole world of me now as Scientologist and Steve is Scientologist. But in terms of sexuality, I couldn't come out because I knew it was considered as a perversion, a perversion, an aberration. In L. Ron Hubbard's words. Yes. And I know that there was a specific register of Celebrity Center that said, like, if you happen to be gay, if you are, we can place you on a program to basically audit out the gay in layman's wow. term. Wow. So I knew that if I would go up the bridge and they would say, you know, as you go, you know, you rise up the tone skill, you're going to get out of, you know, your What Hubbard calls yeah. low tone yeah. behavior. Yeah, yeah, being mm -hmm. out of that low tone. So what was the attitude when you were in the Church of Scientology, specifically Celebrity Center? Were there people online that were gay? Did they receive auditing? What was said behind their backs? Kind of give me a little bit about that sort of world. And that's probably a big subject. <laughs> it's a lot, probably, but it is. It's a big. It, it's a big subject because, um, you know, at one point I took a vow to never discuss people's cases, right. um, and so I don't want to violate that. However, sure. however, um, what I do want to share is what the attitude was behind the scenes, and right. I don't have to name people or specific situations, but <clears throat> if if it turned out that, like, let's say somebody who was a lesbian who bought some auditing and didn't know, hadn't read anything that Hubbard said about LGBT people. Mm -hmm. So they came into Scientology not aware of Scientology's position on it. Mm -hmm. But it's some, so they buy auditing and they buy more auditing and they're spending more money, even though <clears throat> the person who's selling it to them might be aware that that, that is. An eventual concern right okay so what would happen is the auditing would be sold despite the fact that Hubbard says um, homosexual people shouldn't be processed until they're handled in ethics right. so it's approached as an ethics you know a moral compass issue mm -hmm. and behind the scenes this is talked about at product conferences like the like the uh, ethics officer would come to the product conference when we would be laying out our GI cycles, our right. gross income cycles. What are we? Who are we going to get money from today? And we'd make lists of people right. of who we were going to get money from today. And the the ethics officer would come to the table and say, "Well, uh, Jane Smith uh, was sent to ethics because in her session she talked about a lesbian relationship with someone." And so she's now, she needs uh, a particular rundown, she needs mm -hmm. a sec check, she needs paid ethics handlings or whatever. This would be money, just money, 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 money. Yes. How we'll can take we, money. How can we, how can we make money on this? How can we handle that individual through income earning processes? Exactly. And so we would work it out at the product conference. Wow. Um, and then that person would be out of auditing and sent to ethics and do some sort of ethics handling and then pay for, there was, used to be a rundown called the false purpose rundown, mm -hmm. okay? And this is auditing sold like to address a particular, like your sexuality. Yeah. And you could spend 10 intensives, right. meaning- 120 hours uh, plus. 120 <laughs> hours of auditing. Yeah. And after that, what changes? Nothing. Yeah. It's because Scientology doesn't work. 
And it drives the person in, they look inside the their person person. in, they feel they feel that since Scientology is not working on me, something's wrong with me. That Scientology is a solution to everything, everyone, every problem. There's always a reference. You're looked at L. Ron Hubbard as source. He's the one person that you know that if you go to and you know, so to speak, in terms of receiving auditing, going to a church of Scientology. Mm -hmm. At least for me, I felt like when I was there, even if I wasn't, say, receiving auditing, maybe I was doing a course, or just being there, I knew that I felt like kind of safe because I, I was so lost, especially as an artist, because there's not like a clear path to take. I was yeah. very lost, but I knew that if I was in Scientology, there was a very specific laid out path. Yes. A very expensive laid out it path. It gives you a security, it's right? Like a form of security. Maybe, maybe a hope, even. Mm -hmm. um, exactly. Because Hubbard describes it that way. Hubbard says, and this is what is so tricky and so coercive, because when you read some of the early policies like safeguarding Scientology or keeping Scientology working, Hubbard describes humans of being in a labyrinth. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know if you felt like you were in a labyrinth before you came into Scientology, but I didn't. Mm -hmm. But I'm reading, oh, all humans are, we're in a labyrinth. So we're in this trap that we can't get out of, and we need Scientology to get us out of a trap we didn't even know we were in. Mm -hmm. So now we're dependent on Scientology to get us through the labyrinth and out yeah. of the trap, except their solution, of course, is by doing that with Scientology services. The problem is the opposite happens. You stay in this labyrinth, you mm -hmm. become trapped, even though you're studying about freedom or spiritual freedom, you're giving up your freedom because you're becoming more dependent on Scientology to get you through the labyrinth. Okay. You weren't even in before you in got the first there. Place. You know, that's what happened to me after I spent so many years in Scientology through Celebrity Center. I joined the Sea Org, then I worked at the upper levels of management, and I realized that I had definitely gotten myself lost in the labyrinth of Scientology. Scientology. And my goal then became to try to survive and get out. And I actually escaped from the in base in 1990 mm -hmm. and then again in 1993, both times coming back because I loved my husband Peter Schles. And I came back to salvage our marriage or to keep us together. And after that second escape and I came back, I stayed five more years wow. in the Sea Org, only to realize the same thing I had realized before, that I was stuck in a trap, and if I didn't get out, I was going to lose my entire life. It was everything. And so I had to make a choice. Um, Mike Rinder, who is the former spokesman for the Church of Scientology International, he wrote the foreword to my book. And one of the things Mike Rinder says in, in the foreword that he wrote for me, because he got out seven years after I did, but what he wrote, he said, Karen had to make a Sophie's Choice. And if mm. you remember, that was an incredible film yeah. that came out years ago and a book by William Styron. And of course, what she was faced with was, you know, during World War II, she had to choose between which child, like which, child which child she had to give up. She was in a position because of the war of giving up a child. So she had to break her heart in two to choose which child and who can do that. And in my case, I knew that if I didn't leave the Sea Org, I was going to die because I was losing myself, losing my sanity. And my Sophie's choice was, do I stay in the Sea Org or leave? or do I leave my husband, or do I stay for my husband, right. or do I, so my Sophie's choice was, which one do I give up? And after escaping twice and coming back for my marriage to keep it together, to see nothing change in five years, I chose life. And I thus lost my husband and he disconnected from me. And it's crazy and it's just, as you were speaking, I was just thinking like Scientology is supposed to, they say Scientology is about finding yourself, about working on who you are and getting more in tune of who your basic self is and working on your relationships, eight dynamics, working on your relationships with your spouse and with kids and with the group, mankind, so on and so forth. But from what I hear from your story, it ends up coming to the place where Scientology was making 
you less of who you were and more of almost like in the image of what Scientology wants you to be. You're, you hit the nail on the head because in the Sea Org, you have to ask yourself, find out who you really are. And that's one of the ethics conditions formulas. And the only right answer when you're in the Sea Org is to find out that you are the dedicated Sea Org member who right. is devoting themselves to Scientology. That's the only right answer when you're in the Sea Org. And it totally denies who you really are. Yeah. Not the identity someone's trying to put on you, mm -hmm. but who you really are. And so I am so personally happy that you got out of the trap. Likewise, obviously, <laughs> we both survived. This is like, this video should be titled Two Survivors of Scientology Celebrity Center I know. over here. I mean, there's And it's, it's such it's a, a thing journey. to celebrate to see somebody who had their wits about them to figure it out and to get out, like you did, to find who you really are and to pursue, you know, becoming the best version of yourself that you can be which is only going to happen outside of Scientology. Right, and that's a journey that I think so, we're all taking yeah. after we leave Scientology to kind of figure out what we were looking for in the first place, or maybe what we weren't even looking for, but that just kind of happened just by the circumstances of being affiliated to Scientology and by receiving Scientology counseling services and all that sort of stuff. Right. But I know that there's so much more I want to talk to you about, but I'm coming to visit you and, and we're going to do this again. We're going to do a series. We're going to cover things much more in depth. If you guys want to see me have Karen back on my channel, comment down below. Let me know. And I'm going to do a trip to Florida because I do want to talk to you. I want to talk to several others that I've really been wanting to talk to and I really want to share on my channel. I've been really excited to have you on my channel, so I'm so happy you came by. And guys, I've already gotten an advanced copy of Karen's book. I read it. It's amazing. It's out at the end of the month of this month, August 2017. You can get it on Amazon. And the website is escapingscientology2017.com. So I highly recommend checking out Escaping Scientology, an insider's true story, my journey with the cults of celebrity, spirituality, greed, and power by Karen Presley. It is an amazing book. I highly recommend that you guys check it out. And um, Karen's going to come back on my channel hopefully soon in the next coming weeks. I and really look forward it. to that. Yeah, and we have You're so much, just awesome to talk with. Uh, love you so much. And I'm so too. happy that you came here on my yeah. channel. Subscribe button on my channel. Click the little bell icon that's going to notify you when I make more videos. Click a thumbs up on this video. It's a long one. <laughs> Mangotology.com, <laughs> escapingscientology2017.com. And um, thanks so much for watching, guys. And um, we'll be back soon. <laughs> Bye, guys. Video interviews with former Scientologists such as Karen Presley are coming soon on my channel. However, I do need your help to make this possible. Please go to patreon.com slash stevenmango to get more information on my plans to take down Scientology and learn more how you can help me continue my mission in exposing this criminal organization. Thank you.